Well, here we are, back with the old <coughs> Walco WM 180 lathe. <coughs> this is just a sort of a quick follow up on um, some of the mods and improvements that I did to it and um, how they worked out. Now, I'm sure you all remember my brilliant idea for a uh, work light. Uh, very, very cheap LED torch and then one of these rather um, excellent uh, magnetic dial test indicator holders from, from Banggood. And, and that works out really well for about a month. Now, I don't know how much of that you can see. There's 16 LEDs in the end of this torch and we now have, I don't know, again, I don't know whether you'll be able to see that, probably not. Out of the 16 LEDs, well, we've got at least five and a half working. So that was, uh, you know, a good idea, but I have to consign that little torch to the bin. It only cost a couple of quid, so I'm not too bothered about that. So undeterred, I thought we'd upgrade to a slightly better torch. Now this is an Ultrafire LED torch. Um, I've used these before. Um, they're very good. They normally have a little belt clip on. That's the only part of them that's rubbish. It just falls off. But um, they're um, metal, all metal body. And also you can adjust the focus by moving um, moving this in and out like that, which is quite nice. Um, and again, um, still bolted to the uh, still bolted to the old uh, Banggood uh, dial test indicator stand. You know. Now. That worked very well indeed. However, I failed to take into consideration uh, the absent-mindedness of the operator. Uh, I kept leaving the bloody thing on and the batteries went dead. So, right, well, you know, it's a good idea, but it, it, it it's, it's not working out. Then I happened to go back to the original video that I did and I noticed a comment um, uh, that had been there for about six months. I somehow missed the comment notification um, from a chap called uh, Jerry Hinton. And I apologise once again, Jerry, for, for not seeing this when you first posted it. And he put, um, I'll read you what he put on the comment. He's put, hi there, regarding your mag base light, search Amazon for magnetic sewing machine light and take a pick. I bought two for about five pounds each. I have one for my Walco lathe and mill. Took a couple of weeks to come from China and I fit a UK mains plug, job done. Well, thank you so much for that, Jerry. So I did exactly what you suggested. And this, this is what we came up with. And jolly good it is too. Let me uh, plug it in so it actually powers up. There we go. Um, it comes on this flexible arm, which you can just wangle around all over the place. Uh, it's not as big as the, um, as this unit. So, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't get in the way as much as that does. Um, let me turn it off and I'll show you what it actually consists of. So basically you've got um, the magnet, magnetic base here, a little on off, off switch on the back, and then the actual torch itself. Now, the one thing that does give me a little bit of concern is, as you can see, the LEDs in there are not, are not covered up. So I was thinking about maybe putting a pers uh, gluing a piece of perspex, clear perspex over here, uh, just just to protect the LEDs. But um, no, so far it works. It, it works really, really well. And, and as Jerry so rightly said, I think I paid about six pounds fifty for it from Amazon, including including shipping. So yeah, and, and um, excellent idea. I had to extend the mains lead. The mains lead wasn't really long enough for me to get to my my nearest sockets. But um, no, so far. Um, um, a brilliant bit of kit as i said it's just ideal and i don't have to worry about um leaving it turned on either which is the uh, which is which is um uh, an absolute uh, bonus from my my perspective so uh, yeah magnetic base sewing machine light there you go cheapest chips does the job superbly let's zoom back out a bit Well pleased with that. I'll let you. I'll let you uh, know how it works uh, f over a period of time because obviously I've only I've only had this a few weeks. So, um, but uh, yeah, uh, well pleased with it at the moment. I'll put a link in the description to the uh, actual light that I picked up from Amazon. Okay, there's a couple more, three, three or four 
more um, modifications, additions um, that I uh, have done to the lathe just recently. Nothing major, just little items. Um, if we have a look down here. Yes, I finally got completely nutly hacked off with a chuck guard, which is now gone. Now, I'm sure the safety Nazis will have a field day with that one, but it just, it's a right pain, it gets in the way. And if you look at any uh, videos of older lathes, there was no chuck guard ever on any of them. So it just gets in the way. Um, so that freed up a bit of space at the back of the lathe here, which I couldn't otherwise access. And um, I've recently been watching some excellent videos on um, a channel by a chap called, a uh, YouTube channel uh, by a chap called David Richards, who has an amazing workshop. Uh, most of the machines in his workshop are f date from the late, uh, from the early 1920s. But best of all, his little workshop is powered by a small, upright steam engine, um, small horizontal stationary steam engine, and it's all powered via leather belts and line shafts, roof mounted line, sh line shafts. And it's, it's awesome. Anyway, I've been working my way through his back catalogue of videos, and um, I happened to notice on one of his lathes, he'd uh, taken a bit of metal pipe, short bit, uh, fixed it to a bracket and bolted the bracket um, on onto the headstock area of the lathe, and he was using it to hold his chuck key. And I thought, well, it's an absolutely brilliant idea. And I have no idea why I didn't think of this. So I've done exactly the same thing. Only um, basically I've got a bit of square section brass tube here, bolted to the back of the lathe. And um, there's actually a bit of copper pipe inside. I didn't have any uh, square section brass tube that was th really the right size for the, for the chuck key. But so there's actually a bit of copper pipe inside there. So that's where the chuck key sits. And then um, I've also, uh, Done the same at the other end. For my Jacobs chuck. Now I've got various different Jacobs chucks which can fit in the tailstock, um, but I generally use the largest one, which is my, uh, currently in my number 34. So that's uh, the same sort of thing. A little bit of square section brass tube, bolted onto the back of the lathe and uh, holds the uh, chuck key. So <clears throat> no more scrubbing around on the bench trying to find the thing. Um, again, very simple mods, but they just make your life easier, basically. Um, what else? Yeah, I'll put a link in the description to Dave Richards' video channel, YouTube channel, and it's well worth checking out. Um, finally got around to making a uh, winding handle for my, for my uh, Walker lathe. Um, now this is uh, based on superb winding handle that Steve Jordan made on his channel and I'll put a link in the description to his video. Mine's a much more simplified version of what he did. Um, basically you have a, this is a piece of mild steel tube um, which was slightly, the outside diameter of this was slightly larger than the inside diameter of the lathe spindle. Um, I've turned it down so it's a nice good fit into the lathe spindle. Um, then I used a boring bar on this end to cut a taper about one inch deep on the inside of the tube and there's a mating taper on this brass uh, bung in the end here. Um, then I put four slits in equidistant around the uh, top of the, the tube. Um, there's a six mil bit of studding which uh, lo is lo the brass, uh, the brass um, bung here is locked to and that goes all the way through to the other side of the handle. Um, this is a bit of um, aluminium uh, bar which is uh, bored out to take the mild steel tube. Uh, there wasn't an awful lot of meat on the tube for these set screws which hold the bar in place so basically I've put a piece of steel uh, rod in the tube at this end which has got a six mil hole bolt bored through it to allow the rod to go all the way through and that's drilled and tapped across to take these set screws. So that holds this metal piece into this hub and then basically uh, there's a couple of cap head screws here which hold this aluminium uh, flat bar which is the crank uh, to to the uh, the aluminium boss and then I just turned up a um, 
bit of brass bar for the for the, for the handle. Very light knurl on it. Rounded off the end. Counterboard it for a for the uh, lock nut. It's in the end there. And then again, there's another bit of studding, six mil studding through there, which is Loctited into uh, that end of the crank. Um, um, and that's all there is to it, really. Um, and uh, well, let's see it in action. Okay, now um, with the nut on this end of the uh, bit of studding loose, um, this will fit nicely into the end, end, of, end of the spindle like that. Um, as a safety precaution, I always turn the lathe to the off position because you do not want to be running the lathe with the handle in place. So once it's in, um, you tighten the nut up on the bit of studding, grab your spanner. Oops, helps if you have the right one. Lock that down, and that firmly locks the the um, the handle to the to the to the lathe spindle. And uh, here you can hear, see it in operation. And it, it, it just makes um, doing things such as uh, cutting threads using dies on the lathe um, so much easier. It's, it, really, it really is. Uh, it, it really just makes life so much, so much easier. I basically made the crank as long as I could have clearance for on the back of the, of the lathe. I don't want to have it too near the, the, the bench top so I can easily rotate the lathe, rotate it without hitting anything. So um, yeah, it works really, really well. Right, when you're done with it, you take your spanner, undo the nuts, take your brass or copper-headed hammer, give it a tap, which frees obviously frees up the uh, the bung from the uh, taper, and then just pull the winding handle out, and you're good to go. Job done. So there you go. That that's. Uh, these are the latest, a uh, few of the latest uh, mods improvements that I've uh, made to the my Walco W180 lathe, um, and uh, that's it for now. So I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks very much for watching. Cheers.